Hey everybody, how you doing? Mark here. And today, I want to take you out for lunch. That's right, I am taking you out to have my lunch. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I want to go into uh, Monroe to Alp and Dell and get a sandwich and then I want to uh, head out north of Monroe, jump on County J and ride that road it is a wonderful road so yeah i really want to have a good day nice twisty turns good hills just an amazing riding experience but i found a new park that i want to go check out and it's actually just called donald that's it that's the name of the name of the park it's just donald like donald duck so we'll just go up there, sit down, have a lunch, maybe uh, check it out a little bit, and have a good day. Now in my last video, my hiking video, where I was out on the Military Ridge Trail, I did something out there and I'm going to carry it through again, and that is I'm going to tell you two truths and a lie and you need to guess what the lie is. Oh, he's got his blinker on so he wants to turn so I'm just going to stay right behind him. Okay, so two truths and a lie. So here are your three options. In my lifetime, I have tried to start up a couple of small businesses all on my own. And here is what I've tried to start up, or did I? The first one is that with my culinary degree, I came up with a really good way to cook up hot dogs. So I was actually selling hot dogs out of a hot dog cart. Load it up on a little trailer, take it to parks, sell hot dogs for a little while, load it up, take it back home, you know, and that was my, my day. It was an okay living. Is that a truth or a lie? Next. I actually had a internet-based e-commerce where I was selling pumpkin patterns. You know, the patterns that you would get um, for doing, uh, carving jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween and stuff, but they weren't your typical run-of-the-mill eyes, nose, smiley mouth, whatever. You know, these were really quite detailed, and I was doing like celebrity faces and cartoon characters and stuff like that, and uh, it wasn't taking off too much, but I was doing all right. I was basically making enough to pay for my internet costs. Is that a truth or a lie? And then lastly, I actually started a motorcycle touring business based here in Wisconsin. So basically people can uh, register to purchase uh, tour packages and I would take them to go see different sites. You know, it could be the Harley Museum, it could be the uh, um, Pabst Blue Ribbon uh, factory and mansion, um, a tour of the Miller Brewing Company in Milwaukee. Hell, I might even just been um, going out on rustic roads and riding rustic roads for a couple of days. And that business never took off like I was hoping, so I had to close it down. 
So, is that a truth or a lie? Okay guys, so that's it. Those are your three options. I actually owned and operated a hot dog cart. I owned and operated a pumpkin pattern website. Or did I start a motorcycle touring business so I can show people my wonderful state? Which one of those is a lie? Comment down below and I will tell you the answer at the end of the video. Alright guys, here we are. I tell you, I hope this video turns out alright because that wind is really blowing hard. But those white silos just over there, that is Alp and Dell. And that's where we're going to go in and get a sandwich. Now I go there fairly often to get cheese. And gosh, I think it was probably about five, six years ago. I was uh, driving through and picked up a sandwich from there. Man, that was good. But I really haven't had any since. So we are going to go and pick up one of those nice sandwiches. Alright, so I'll see you when I come out from Alp and Dell. Well damn guys, that sucks. Stopped here to pick up a sandwich and they actually don't make sandwiches anymore. sandwiches there so so I'm just going to go a little farther into town and uh, there's a subway just down the street here so we're just going to do that instead damn that really pisses me off too you know, their sandwiches were really good, their, their meat that they used was really good, the, the cheese of course was, you know, fresh, and oh, oh well, life goes on, right? Okay guys, so I got my lunch complete with sandwich, chips, and a soda, and we are going to make our way up to the Donald County Park in Dane County here. It'll take us about 40 minutes to get up there. But uh, we're going to take a nice route. We're going to use County J. And I tell you, County J is just awesome. I actually used it when I went up to a Blue Mound to do my last hike when I did the Military Ridge Trail. Oh, County J was just beautiful, so I had to get on the motorcycle and ride that road. The weather today, as you can see, is just clear as a bell. However, it is 90 degrees outside. And the winds are going at 20, 25 miles an hour. So yeah, they're they're a little severe for this area, you know, down in down in Oklahoma and stuff like that. 20 mile an hour, that's like your everyday breeze down there. <laughs> But up here, 20, 25, that's a pretty good sized wind. Uh, look at that view right there. Holy cow. Look at that. Okay, County Highway J is just up here behind 
this uh, restaurant bar thing up here. This is not a rustic road or anything, guys. I was just so impressed with the road. I just wanted to get out here and ride it. So yeah, that's a restaurant bar. I have no idea what it's called. I can't read the signs either. <laughs> Junction House, I think is what it's called. That's the dairy farm over here. And now we'll sit here and we'll just kind of cruise through the country roads. Uh, a lot of the curves on here are going to be slower curves, you know, 25, 35, 40. So, and sometimes they're not even marked, so you got to be careful of that. So, how you guys been doing this week? Did you guys get out on any hikes, any rides, try any interesting uh, food dishes? Let me know. Make a comment down below. I want to know where you go. Do you uh, just walk to work, uh, ride to work? Uh, what did you pack for your lunch at work? You know, just whatever, guys. Just make a comment down below, and I'd really appreciate that. My week's been pretty good. See, now, like that building right there, that is so cool. I have no idea what it's used for. It definitely looks like a commercial building of some sort. But it also looks like it's kind of getting run down, so I don't know if there's anything that actually operates out of it, or someone just uses it for storage, I don't know. But my week has been going pretty good. Uh, we're getting the camper set up for its maiden trip. So we're starting to get our all of our old camping gear cleaned up and put into the camper and getting all that all stocked up and ready to go. And yeah, we should be heading out uh, in a couple of weeks. We'll be heading out on its maiden voyage. And in fact, I think my next hiking video might just be um, an introduction to that camper. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Just to give you guys a little bit of a rundown of our Wolf Pup 16 PF. You know, it's not a review, it's not a, uh, a test drive or a test uh, haul or anything like that. You know, let's go out and play with it and see what it's got and then take it back to a dealership. This is actually going to be us out camping in it. <laughs> got a little bit of a rock cropping out there. Yeah. Nice hills up and down, curves all over the place. God, I love this road. Now, I will have to say, if you guys have been watching the last couple of videos, um, I was, I've been talking about all the expenses that we've had in the past month. And because of those expenses, Jen is starting to rethink on if she's going to be going on the Route 66 ride with me. So yeah, we just don't know yet. You know, with all the, with all the uh, costs that we've been having, the expenses, getting the truck fixed and all that stuff, the down payment on the camper. She's having a hard time now justifying going out and renting a car, paying for all the gas, especially the way gas prices are, and then also getting a plane ticket to come home. So yeah, she's kind of up in the air right now on whether or not she's going to do Route 66 or not. I'm hoping I can still do it. I hope she can give me the clearance. I mean, I just don't know. You know, I kind of have to go off of what she says, you know, if we can afford it. We'll go. If not, I guess I got to make other plans to do something else. You know, I'm, that's that's the life, guys. That's just the way it is. You can plan on something, set your heart on something, and then all of a sudden, boom, it gets taken away from you, and none of it is actually your fault. Okay, it just happens. Uh, 
I don't know, windmill right there. <laughs> cool. Now, a lot of people won't associate this kind of terrain with being in Wisconsin because it's so hilly and the roads are all curvy and stuff. Well, the places where the glaciers did not come through are very hilly. So yeah, if you actually look at a topographical map on like Google or something like that, and you'll notice that the northern part and then down through some of the southeastern part is pretty flat. Whereas the southwestern part and the western part of the state are very hilly. And that's kind of where we're at. We're in what's called the driftless area. So no glaciers have come through this area. So the, uh, the ground is just really raw. You know, it's not, it hasn't been flattened. It's really, really fun to ride. That old farmhouse over there with a silo still standing where a barn probably once was. There's a nice little silo here. farm I don't think but that looked nice these hills are pretty wicked you come flying up on them and it's like holy crap where does it go yeah I don't see it <laughs> off these hills and just hope to God that there's not a deer or something <laughs> out in the middle of the road. Yeehaw! That's what I mean. These roads are so fun. Oh, got some wicked curves coming up here. 15 mile an hour. Down into fourth gear. This is the uh, the sharper curve. Got to take it down to third gear for this one. There's a nice, beautiful old barn there with a windmill, a couple of silos. See guys, this is the reason why you guys gotta get out and explore roads. I live an hour away from this road. So I'm almost never over here. And just off of a fluke, I took this road to get into Blue Mound so we can go hiking. And I was like, oh, this is this looks like so much fun. Gotta get over here on the bike. And so here we are. That's an interesting looking house right there. Look at that. Another big, beautiful old barn silos. See, these are the things that just touch my heart. You know, it, I think of all the history that that farm now has. It's still operational. There's dairy cows over there. See the wind blowing the trees. You can see the grass waving through that wind. Alright, well I'm gonna stop my yakking. I might talk a little bit more once we get to our lunch stop. But for now, I'll just let you guys enjoy the scenery.
look at that view. Wow. Got an old building over here. <laughs> You know, I thought it interesting when Jen and I visited Itasca State Park up in Minnesota that they actually have a small village set up of restored buildings that they literally found out in the middle of fields and in swamps and stuff like that. Stuff that people left and had abandoned and they were, you know, rotting, dilapidating and people just found them and were like okay you know we're going to save this building and put it up in this little village and in my mind i was like how can you just like lose a building you know just forget it was there but you know what i'm seeing even around here you'll find like you know a wooded area like what's over here and you can barely see like the uh, stone foundation of a building that was there at one time. So yeah, I'm, I'm starting to understand how mills and churches and barns and just houses are lost. You know, people, you know, 100 years ago were going through 200 years ago traveling through this vast country making homesteads and they weren't registered nobody knew they were there and then all of a sudden people start finding a house that's literally in a forested area you know with a small little clearing where uh, where they had made crops and stuff like that uh, what is this little town I can't remember Oh, Mount Vernon. Okay. I've never actually came into Mount Vernon this way. I'm always on 92 here. Mount Vernon's a cool little town. Um, a few small shops here and there. I don't even think they have a gas station or anything here. You know, they got like an automotive repair shop and a couple of nice houses, a nice big church. And that's about it. That's all that's really around here. But I mean, some of the houses are just, just beautiful. for this park which is right over there by the way all right now right up here this big huge rock structure this is all part of the park too over here so yeah, that's kind of cool, but I tell you, I would love to have that house. And there is an entry, is that, oh, yep, that was my entrance right there, damn it. Just about missed it. Actually, I did miss it. <laughs> All right, let's get turned around here. I said, I've never been here before, so I have no idea what's in here. Didn't even know where the entrance technically was. <laughs> All right. Now, um, there's a general use area that we're going to, and that's for people that are wanting to walk the trails and do all that. Oh, this looks like all fresh stuff here. Um, and then there's also an equestrian lot, so people that are bringing their horses can uh, have their own place to set up and do what they need to do. All right. 
All right, looks like we might have to do a little bit of walking to maybe get to a, a place to sit and have our lunch, which is no problem. We can do that. Okay, everybody, so here we are. All this land over here, this is all the uh, Donald Park system. And we are going to have our lunch right up there at that gazebo. Looks like we have a little pit toilet over here. With the exception of the wind, should be a nice little picnic. All right, let's go up here. I saw something up here by these trees. And you got a little bench over here. And over there looks like another uh, picnic table. And it looks like a fire pit. And there's a picnic table and a fire pit here. Look at that, they even got some wood sitting here. How about that? So we've got a little hatchet. You can uh, break up the logs, make a little fire, cook off some hot dogs. Oh yeah. Oh, holy cow, I think I see one through the trees over there too. So yeah, I'm seeing another picnic table and another fire pit. So there's at least one, two, and the one over there is three. So three fire pits at least, and that's just what I'm seeing just now as I got here. You know, maybe if I walk around, maybe there's some more, you know, down through that way. But look at that, look at that view. It is so nice. All right, let's sit down and have lunch. All right, so let me have my lunch. The uh, great ride over here. We saw so much, we really did. Um, all the barns and fields and valleys and hilltops and God, just the scenery was just unbelievable. It really is. And for those people that think that you cannot find good roads in the Midwest, you're deceiving yourselves. You really are. Wisconsin has some great roads. I know Minnesota has great roads. Illinois has great roads. Nebraska has great roads. I know. I've been on them. But, uh, yeah, you guys need to expand not only your palate, but you need to expand your territory of where you ride because there are a lot of rides out there, a lot of good roads. And if you think that you can only find good roads in the mountains and stuff like that and through the deserts of Arizona and New Mexico and the high plains deserts and stuff like that, if you think those are the only good roads to ride, you're mistaken. All right, guys, well, I'm just about home. I hope this is a good video, man. The wind has been so strong. I hope you guys have been able to hear me. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but before I completely sign off, did you guys make your comment on the truth or the lie? Did you guys decide? Because I'm going to tell you the answer. So quickly, write down. I don't want you guys cheating and write down your answer after I already give it, okay? Because this is something that I've never talked about in any of my videos. So, it's more or less, how well do you think you know me? Okay, so the answer of truth or lie. The lie is that I have never owned a hot dog stand. Never. I did do a uh, an inter internet uh, e-commerce based uh, pumpkin carving uh, page. I was selling pumpkin carvings. I was making pumpkin carvings um, for uh, businesses and stuff like that. Um, I made some for some car dealerships. I made a bunch for the bank that I used to work for. Um, I did custom carvings for people with like grandkids or something like that where they'd want their name on the pumpkin. That is something I've done. In fact, I will show you some of the pumpkins that I've carved. 
Now keep in mind that these pumpkins that I'm showing you, these are artificial pumpkins. So they can be used over and over again. They don't have to be um, thrown away every year and recarved. These are in a styrofoam pumpkin. And yeah, I think at one time in front of my house, I had like 250 pumpkins in my yard. I have been on the news. I have been in the paper, all because of my pumpkin carving. I even did try to start up a motorcycle tour company and people would come forward and pay a little bit of money and I would take them on tours around the state from places like going to like the Pabst Mansion or a tour of the Miller Brewing Company. Um, trying to think of what else it was. I mean, these things were years and years ago, guys. Um, but it also was things of just um, doing rustic roads and stuff like that, you know, just guiding people around and showing what there is to offer here in Wisconsin. I never had a single customer doing that. <laughs> so, there are your answers between two truths and a lie. The lie was I never owned a hot dog stand or a hot dog cart. So I hope you, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying playing these little uh, get to know you type games. But most of all, I hope that I am inspiring you to get out and enjoy life, enjoy your ride, enjoy a walk, enjoy your food. That's what it's all about. So I do want to say thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, stay tuned next week. Um, I got a, I got a really good ham and cheese slider recipe that I want to share with you guys. I think this is something that is great for just a lunch or a dinner at home with the family to halftime snacks and stuff for the big game okay so really stay tuned i think you'll really enjoy this recipe but i do want to thank you for watching my video i hope you enjoy it i hope you share it with your friends and family and sorry about the uh, camera shaking this is a pretty bumpy road but I want to thank you for subscribing. I want to thank you for commenting. I love getting the questions. I really do. So this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. And I'll see you guys on the road. Bye.